Okay, the video. Now, in this one, what we're going to do is we're going to have a quick look at the e-learning project that you've been set. So you can see here, I'm in the Year 5 Teams. And if I go across the top here, I can still go to my Scratch link here if I want to open Scratch. I can also click here on the Year 5 ICT OneNote. So if I click on that one. Like in the Scratch video that you saw the other day, there's a good chance this will be quite slow to load. When it does, if I click on, uh, if your site isn't loading correctly, click here. It will take me to the same options. I'm going to choose go to the site again. And after a few seconds, you should see that this takes me into the Year 5 ICT project, or the Year 5 ICT one. Now, I've already opened one of these just to make this a bit quicker. So if I click across to this one, it's the same one, this one I've opened already. You can see there's an e-learning work here. And it says purpose um, is to give you some work basically to do while you're not at school and we can't work together. It runs through how to make a Scratch account. Now, we've covered that in the previous video, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about this. And then it gives you a project. Now, the project was inspired by one that me and Mr. Demetpore saw when we went to um, see the founder of Scratch, the guy who'd actually first created this. And what you need to do is you need to produce a game or story about your time during Chinese New Year and the time you couldn't come back to school. What can you make on Scratch which tells us about what you did or wanted to do during this time? Have fun and remember to comment nice on each other's work. So you could make this into a story or you could make this into a game. The first thing you'll need to start to do is plan out how this is going to work. So before you um, start your story or game, plan it out. What is it you want to say? What is it you want your audience to see or do? And there's quite an interesting Scratch tutorial that you can go through here, and then you can start to set the scene and start to think about how that's going to do. So if you look in section two here, um, these are a set of Scratch resource cards. And what they do is they tell you to think about what you're going to include. So how are you going to start a story or a conversation? How are you going to switch backgrounds? There's quite a lot of resources that you can look through on here. I'm going to give a very quick overview on how you can do a basic one, but I'd like you guys to play around and make this far, far more interesting. Make it something exciting. So if I go to the Scratch website, like last time, I'm going to click on Sign In, and I'm going to go to my username, which is the one I made last time, and I'm going to log in. When it loads eventually, it'll show in the top right-hand corner. So I've got my profile, my stuff, but I want to create a new one. So I'm going to go to Create. And again, this may take a few seconds to, to load. And we wait for it to load up eventually. Here we come. When it eventually loads, like last time, it's going to show us the title at the top, and I'm going to call mine uh, my e-learning adventure. You don't have to call yours this. Now, I'm not going to take you all the way through this because this would be quite time consuming, but some very quick basics. I don't want Scratch the Cat, so bye bye Scratch. I want a character that represents me. So now I've got a choice. I can either click on choose a sprite and I can upload a sprite or I could paint a sprite. Okay, so the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to um, actually try and find one that looks a little bit like me to make it easy. So I'm going to look for a blonde man with beard, and I'm going to look for a PNG and see what we find. Okay. I mm, don't think he's blonde, and he definitely doesn't look like me. So I'm going to go to image. The photo I've got here. Beards. him anyway. Now the only problem with this man is he's not actually a That's how I think about him. Do I need a person in my picture? 
find another person. Okay, after a little bit of searching, um, I, I can't find a picture I want, so I've decided to borrow this man. I'm not sure he really looks like me, but he'll work for the case of this. So I've clicked on the picture and it's opened up here, and it's given me the option to download it. It says, wait while the URL is generated, so I'm going to wait a few seconds here, and then we're going to download this image. Okay, so it should now download... Let's wait for that. Where am I going to save this? I'm going to save it somewhere sensible where I can find it. Okay. And then if I go back onto my Scratch program, I should now be able to import that. So if I go into the... I just pressed on click on the file should have gone into the down should be able to find that there we go this so I'm going to call this one smaller because it's a little bit big here but I want me to be able to I'm going to go to cost duplicate him in this top I the costume is called kind of facing right and this one I'm going to flip him horizontally if it doesn't work you can flip it change it there so I'm going to flip horizontally so he's now facing the other way and I'm going to say left which will allow me to move him around a bit more easily afterwards. Press enter, that'll save that. I'll go back into the code here. We can now start. Now, when this e-learning um, kind of adventure that we're in started off, I was in Laos. So what I want now is a background. So I'm going to look for a picture of Laos. And I'm going to find some images, hopefully something that looks nice. Okay, that's quite a nice picture and looked a little bit like where I was, so I'll borrow that one. Again, we'll wait for it. e-learning one I'm going to spend a lot of time doing this It'd be great if you guys wanted to we're going to get what we've got there because we're Have some space at the top. Um, to a vector, which should give me. You can pull this up to the top left hand corner. Allow us to grab the bottom corner and pull the. Okay, pull that around a bit, make sure. And then when we're ready, we can let go. Not quite got that right there, have I? Get the blue icon would be nice. Put it back a bit further across. Make sure there's no white space above or below. 
There we go. Okay, so here I am. I'm in Laos. And at the moment, I'm kind of standing on the grass. That's probably an okay starting point. I've just moved it, so now I'm not. So it's moved me, so I'm starting there. Now, when my story starts, I want him to stay in the same place. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to the code. And I'm going to start with an event block to start my story. And I'm going to start with a green when clicked. And there's a few things I want to happen here. The first thing is I want to go to the looks one here. No, nope. I want to go to the motion one here, and I want to set my position. So I want to come to this position. So if anything's changed when I've run the program, whenever I press the green button, he should go back to there. I also want him, if I scroll down the looks one here, to be set as visible. So if later on I decide to hide this character, when I come back and click on the start, he will become visible. And I also want to set the background to be this one, because although there is only one background at the moment, the chances are as we go through this, this will change. So again, we're going to switch the background to Laos. So whenever we start it, all those things will come into play. Then I can start to think about how my story is going to begin. So maybe we can start with me saying something. We could do that as a recording, actually. We could do it as a sound. I'm not going to. I'm just going to say um, one of these. I'm going to say, and I'm not going to say hello. I'm going to say, oh, no. School is closed. What am I going to do without my year five class? question mark okay now if we press on the green button now oh no school's closed what i'm going to do without my year five class it's a bit short isn't it i can't really read that in two seconds so we're now going to go at changing that so it says something like four seconds i don't want it to be there forever though i do want my story to move on so i'm going to press green again oh no school's closed what i'm going to do without my year five class then i need to think about what's going to happen next in the story so what happened did i stay in laos did i go somewhere else I'm presently in England, so something must have happened in between. Maybe after he's thought about that, he could move somewhere. So what we could do is we could take the character and we could move him somewhere like this, who's kind of at the edge of the page. We've set the starting position. We've moved him. So if we now go to the movement blocks, we can now go on and we can look for, sorry, motion blocks, there we go. Uh, we can use the glide. And if we use glide to the position he's in at the moment, he will glide across. If I change one to two, it will go slower. So if we press green now, oh no, school is closed. What am I going to do without my year five class? And off the screen he goes, or kind of off the screen he goes to the edge of the screen. We could now have either he could think of something or um, a plane could fly in and he could get in the plane or um, he could now go to a new destination. We could have him turn round because we have got him facing one way. So if we go into the looks and we switch him, okay, we could switch costumes so he's now facing uh, the right-hand side. If I do this, I should make sure that at the beginning he's facing left so that we actually see a turn. So let's play that. So, oh no, school's closed. What am I going to do without my year five class? So he's facing left and he turns right. That's kind of the wrong way around, isn't it? Should we swap those around? to right and a left. Oh no, school is closed. What's I going to do without my year five class? Off he glides and then he should turn around just at the end. There we go. So he's now facing the opposite way. Maybe he has a moment of thought. Maybe he could think for something he thinks. I know I'll fly to England and use my laptop to set a project. Okay, again, two seconds might be a bit short here. You can pull this across. If your screen's a bit bigger than mine, you'll see more of this at once. You can also zoom in and out here. Okay, I've been trying to keep it in so you guys can see it a bit more clearly. So we can set that as four seconds or something here. Okay. And again, we'll play that through. So now he's going to say something. Then he's going to glide across. Then he's going to turn. And then he's going to have a bit of a thought bubble. 
okay? So we could now change the scene. He could disappear off or a plane could fly in. He could get on the plane. You could also pause it. The next level, so you could change this. So we, we could now go on here and we could choose a new backdrop. And this could be something, um, what should we have? It could be a very basic one that we add as a second backdrop. And on here, at this point, we could have a looks so we could switch the backdrop to the blue sky background so now when it plays through oh no school's close what i'm going to do without my year five class he slides across he turns round then it changes to this now this might be um him waiting for the plane and we could put the plane in. Or this could be like a quick maze game where he's got to kind of go around the maze game in order to get to um, the aircraft. And then the character would have to play that. So when we we could then set a new whole set of new, of new controls on here. So we could say um, events. When the backdrop switches to, and we could choose blue sky, and then we can start to use our if command. So if we take this back into the backdrop one now, okay, if we just click on the backdrop here and click on the backdrops here, we could do the um, kind of maze game instructions that we've done before. So if I convert this to a bitmap, we could draw a few obstacles like this one. Could draw an obstacle there. Could draw an obstacle there. Could draw an obstacle there. Well, apparently I can't because I didn't click. <laughs> could draw an obstacle there. Can move these around a bit so they're kind of off the edge. And it could be that he has to get all the way up to the top of here in order to get on the plane. So if I now go back into the code section here and we click back on Mr. Dyson, we can say when backdrop switches to blue sky, then we could start to add in some control. So we could say, um, first of all, when we press the up button, so move that across so you can see them both at once. When we press the down button, when we press the left button, so we're using the arrow keys here, and when we press the right button. So when we press the left button, what we want him to do is we want him to move left. Now, the way I would do this, I would use X, Y. So remember, X is across and Y is up and down. So if we want to move left, what we want to do is we want to change X by minus 10. Okay? If we wanted to go right, we want to change X by 10. If we want to go down, we want to change Y by minus 10. And if we want to go up, we want to change x by 10. So now, if I press um, on here, I should be able to control him and move him around. But he's quite big, and he also doesn't change around in the direction. So again, we might need to change that. We might need to say, let's go back onto our looks, and we might say when he's looking right, he should have the costume right. So equally, when he's left, he should be in the costume left. So I'm going to put these in. They're a bit muddled up, so I'm going to pull that down a bit so there's a bit more space so you can see that. And then we zoom out a little so you can see that more clearly. So the right arrow is which is the costume to costume right. Let's put those in the same position. Now if we click here and go left, he looks left. If we go right here, he turns and goes right. Okay. He's a little bit big, though. He was a good size for the starting point, but he's a little bit big now, so that when we've got into this blue sky background, so if we just scroll down a bit, so we've got, again, a bit of clear space here, so we've got space to work. I'm going to zoom in again so you can see this more clearly. When the backdrop switches to the blue sky, I think he needs to shrink, okay? So what we're going to do here is we're going to get change size. So at the moment, he's at 50%, so I'm going to change him to 30%. Now, the problem, again, you've got to remember this. If I change it, it won't automatically change back. So then what we should do up here at the top is set the size to 50%. So when it restarts, he goes back to his normal size. 
which wasn't the full size that he was when we first imported him. Okay, so when backdrop switches to, to blue sky, he sets the size to 30%. Let's just try that and see if that works. So he's going to go through his whole first preamble. He's going to go across, he's going to turn around. The background's going to appear. Okay, and now he's a smaller person so who can turn and move as he turns. Okay, can I get him through the gap there? I'm not sure. I also made a mistake here. Can you see what I've done here? That shouldn't be an X. That should be a Y. Okay, so we need to go back in. And we need to change Y by 10 there. Okay. I'm going to reduce him down to about 20 or 25% so we can get him through, but I'm not going to affect that at the moment. Now, as he goes through, he shouldn't be able to touch these, so we need to remember to use these sensing blocks. Okay? And if we're using the sensing blocks, we're going to need to have them happening all the time. So what we need to do here is we need to add an if block in. So we're going to say, um, here we go, forever if sensing and I'm going to use a touching color one so we're going to say because remember I'm still programming Mr. Dyson here so if he's touching the color you click on here click on the color picker you'll see the outline goes purple so you can see at the moment that's green now it turns to purple okay so if he's touching the color purple well basically what I want to do is I want to send him back to the beginning okay so I'm going to go back to the motion and I'm going to send him to the position he's in at the moment okay now, if I click on him and start to move him across, you should see if he touches the edge of this, I have to run that again. Okay, he slides across, he turns round, he gives his message, the page changes, he's a smaller person now, he can turn around, he can go down, he can go up, but if he touches the top of the screen, he gets thrown back. Okay, so now you've got to carefully move me around but I'm still not finished here. He needs to have an objective. So I could put a plane up here that he gets to, and then I could put another sensing block that if he touches the plane, then he gets the next part of the story, and he could say what happened when he got to England. Well, he got his laptop and he started to create a scratch project to send to his year five class. This is a not very well developed e-learning adventure at the moment, but it gives you the basics of some of what you guys should be able to do. Once you've finished with it, you should share it so everybody else can see it. You'll see mine doesn't give a save option here, so it's already saved. If I just quickly change something, just so that uh, it comes up with the Save Now button, I can save it. Okay, so that's now saved. If it's not showing, it's already saved itself. I've given it a name, so I'm going to click on Share. Okay. So it says My e-learning adventure. I can give some instructions. I could say something like, This is what happened to Mr. Nope. <laughs> Happened to Mr. Dyson. Can you complete his adventure? Yep. If you've borrowed things or you've got ideas from people, you can tell people about that there. Once you're absolutely finished, you should click here where it says Add to Studio, and you should add it to the e-learning project within that class. And then everybody else We'll see it. So just to show that, if I now click on my um, classes, and we wait for that to load up, you'll see this takes me into the 5KC class, which is the one where I've produced this as a sample. So if you're in that class, you can have a look at this. In there, there's a class studio. So if I click in here, once everybody submitted their work, you should see their projects start to appear in here. This is just being a little bit slow to load up here. Okay. Go back and do that again. Okay, I just refreshed my screen there, and you can see my e-learning adventures appeared here. As all your friends had them, they will appear beside them. You'll then be able to click on them. When they load, you'll then be able to play them, but you'll also be able to give them comments. A big thing for me about this is give them comments to help them. If you see something that doesn't work, politely tell them. A game can still be very good, but have a couple of mistakes in it. Okay? We want to see things that either praise people and point out things they've done really well. And you can be, say that. You can say, wow, this is amazing, or I really enjoyed, and say what you enjoyed. 
or if there's a small problem with it, you can click, you can in the comment give them very specific issues about what the problem was. So your game was very good, but when I tried to do this, this is what happened. And then people can go back and fix their game. Okay, I paused that for a second just because it was running slowly on my machine, but you can see my projects now appeared here. If I want to click into, uh, if I click C inside, it will reopen it, which will allow me to play everybody else's game. And at the bottom here, I can now write a comment. And as I said, this gives me a chance to give very specific, very helpful comments to my friends. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you do here. I will keep flicking through and I'll try and comment on as many of these as I can. Have fun with it, produce different things, give ideas to each other, and make this something that's not only an interesting coding adventure, but an interesting example of what you yourselves have been doing in the last few days and weeks. Good luck.